All right, let's recap here for a minute what we did. We made a class called Player, and this player only plays paper, uh, rock, paper, scissors, right? So, bless you. So we used an enumerator, which we covered last time, to determine, uh, to, uh, to set the possible outcome values, right? So we call it outcome. If we were to numerate this, we'll say rock actually has the value zero, paper has the value one, Oops. and scissors value two, right? We have a field called value. Its type is the outcome, so it can only have rock, paper, scissors. It cannot have zero, one, two, three, whatever. This instance field, right? And because we have an instance field, we created an accessor to get the value, just returns the current value. And the field type since it's outcome, the function returns an outcome. And the mutator, well, we don't have really a conventional mutator. We have a draw, so basically we don't pass a value to be set manually by the user. It's a random number. And then we just did a result, the random number between 0 and 3, so we use the random class. An instance of the class random, we have a value, a variable called ren. And then, this is what I was talking about. How do we convert a number to an outcome? Well, the outcome has positions, 0, 1, or 2. We actually call them index. So when you hear about index, you think about a position in a list. Well, our list, we're gonna call them arrays from now on. Well, there's another type of list that we're gonna talk about later. But for now, in the, we're going to refer to this as arrays. So this outcome.values, if I do values here, see it returns, doesn't take parameters, and returns type outcome, and it has those square brackets. And those square brackets, we said, they represent an array, a list. And because they return outcome with the square brackets, we need to say what position we want. So we want 0, 1, or 2, and that's what we had in the results. Our constructor is very straightforward. Since we only have one instance of the class random, we have two players. If it doesn't exist, create one, and then set a default value to draw. And then here, this is what is important to we have a method that takes as parameter another instance of this same class. So we're in the class player and returns, and, the, and this method takes another player. So basically we have two players. In reality, this parameter is simply an address, right? An address that's pointing to the address of another player. It's a pointer. So how do we differentiate one player from the other? We can use the word this if you want. This player, this dot value is equals to rock and the other player value is scissor. Or we could replace this. I'm gonna use it in the second one. So you see you can do it. You can use get value. 
it'll work the same way. See here we're calling the other player get value. We're calling this player that get value. Yeah. As far as get value is go, you don't have to create a set value to get value. I'm sorry, what? As far as like get value is I don't get like set set value. Well, we don't have a set value because we don't, that's what I said here in our mutator. A mutator is different. We don't let the user set the value. It's just a random number, right? So we can refer that as, as a read-only field. You can get the value, but you cannot set it. not externally at least. Then we create this method, right? This class called game. It has two players, you and me. We create the instance. So these two are different, um, different instances of the class player. We added a couple of um, the lines here to see what we each one draw and then we compare them we said every every player is an object right so basically we didn't write the word extends object here well, that's implied that means a player is an object So, let me show you something. I could create, this is just for to show you, an object all equals new object. That's a basic class. We call that a parent class, right? Or a super class. And if I do odd dot, those are the methods that show up. Let's uh, take a screenshot of that. So the object class has those methods. Right. So this is an object. Let's make a square. I'm gonna make this red. I'm gonna make it thin. And so this whole thing is an object. That's the object class. So the object class has these methods. Uh, it has the get class, which is a generic. You're going to see that in the next semester. You're going to see, oops, that's too big. Um, it has the two string. It has the equals. Is there this other hash code notify notify all wait wait wait? So these are three different versions of the wait. That means they are overloaded, right? And then we create this class player. <coughs> So if we do any of the two players, we got those methods. So let me just 
put it here real quick. And notice that these stops say their method name, parameters, return type, and then which class they belong to. So what's happening is we extended this class object. We made a class just around it. Let's do it like this. Oops, sorry. There. So we wrap that class around, and this class we call it player. So the red one is the object and the blue is the player. And we added some methods in the player class. We added these two methods. Actually, we added three. We added uh, this other one, right? So, this class player has not only the, uh, let's make this a bit bigger. not only the everything that the object has but we added some other stuff to it right let's see oh man I move it my LCD won't let me get it There we go. And now the other corner. All right, so that's what the class player looks like. We also have the enumerators there, right? The enumerator belongs to the class player. And the enumerator was um, these three things. So let's add them here. All right, let's see if it fits in one. It doesn't matter. All right, so by looking at this, each each um each item in the RAM has a specific address. Is each of these methods in the instance? So, I mean, I probably won't be able to line them up exactly, but let's say this is a thousand, it keeps incrementing, right, to um, let's just put one here. So this is the address at the beginning. We call this at a thousand. And then over here, it ends uh, address 2000. So it's one megabyte big. Mm -hmm. 
So we use these three methods. in our main class but what happens if uh, let's go back here in my instead of saying you got me that get value what if I use this method to string so this method to string if I run it what does it say oh I don't need this object either. Oh, it's just for the example. It says you got player at that address, right? It's because he came here where the address of the player is, which is the same address as the object, if you notice, and came down, started looking until he found the two string. It, it found it here and the that's inside the object class right so I call it in the object class the two string all it says is return the get class which is this calls that method and then the address where it was found however we can make our own version here of our two string, right? We can make a method just called two string, and this method simply returns the value. Wait, gives me an error. because value is an integer and he expects a string. How can I convert an integer to a string? I mean, it works great when I had it here. You got and then you to get value. Can I do this? What happens? Get value, will that return the same thing? Still gives me an error. So basically I have this integer, which is a primitive type, and I'm trying to convert to a string, which is an object. And it's not letting me do it implicitly. So I have to do explicitly, which means I have to do something. And to do that, I want to introduce you something called wrapper classes. What these wrapper classes do, do, there's a few, basically allows you to treat any primitive type as an object, converts the primitive types and objects. And we know objects, oops, and we know objects have all these methods, including the two string method. So, this wrapper class, the primitive type is integer, is int, right? So, we are going to use the wrapper class and classes, by name and convention, they all start with capital letter and then everything else is lowercase, right? And it's called integer. So this is like a bridge between primitives and objects. And this wrapper class And this wrapper class has a, there all has a bunch of static methods. Pretty much all of them are static. That means I don't de declare an instance of that type 
I don't do the new keyword, right? You cool, actually, at some point we will. So, well, for now, if I just type integer, oops, that's the class, and look at all the methods come up. To binary string, to hexamal string, to octal string, and there's this two string. And if I click on that one, it says two string. Returns a string of the object representing the specified integer. All right. So I can do something like this. What did I do wrong here? Oh, value is a... Uh, how do I convert the, the number? I'm sorry. I, I was stuck in my head value was an integer. We can just use this two string method here. I'll I'll show you the integer the wrapper classes in a minute. My bad. So now let's go back to let's erase the past five minutes. <laughs> um I'll edit the video. So, so what happens is I got this two string method, right? If I run the two string, instead of saying this player add whatever, it gave me the actual name. So what happens is now the player class has a two string method. Um, Let's go back here. Meet to string. And notice, now it'll say this to string belongs to the player class. So what's gonna happen here is the compiler is gonna run, or the program is gonna run, I'm sorry, and it's gonna look for the two string. Oh, we found it at the player class. It doesn't need to know that method exists at the object class because it found it here first. So like it found the get value here. The get value only exists in the player class, right? But if found it, there's no need for the computer to keep digging inside the object class. So here it is, this uh, two string. We said we overwrote it, right? So this one overrides the object class. That method. When you do C++ or C sharp, you're gonna use that word override. Java doesn't have to, you just use it. So, same time we could use instead of me dot get value equals you dot get value we can see if they're the same we can use equals 
or me equals you. But if we do that, I got paper, you got paper, we should be a tied. But it says you won't. Because this equals method is using this equals, the one found inside the object class, right? So we should overwrite that. So <coughs> we're going to do a method called equals. And notice this one in the object class. This method equals takes another object, right? In our case, this method equal is going to take another player. And we can say if the get value or to make it more of this get value equals the other player get value then return true otherwise return false <coughs> now we have created our own version of the equals so when we do equals here Look, there are two versions. <coughs> one takes an object, one takes a player. And the one is going to see first, the one is going to bind to, this is the binding, this is the one that takes a player because I'm passing a player. Do I, even whatever I pick, you know, it's the same thing. So I run this. Let's see when I get to the same. There you go. Nobody won. Because now, this equals method, we overwrote it. So, let's say, and this, this one return paper and this return paper, right? That's what happened. So it says, is paper equals to paper? If that's true, return true. Well, do I really need an if statement for that? I can do it like this too. Let me show you. Uh, you're gonna see this a lot when you, in the uh, real world. You're gonna see it like this. So you remember the return, what it does at the activation record, it returns the expression that's after the, re the uh, return keyword. So it's gonna compare this expression. It's paper equal paper true. So now it's just the word true and it's gonna return true. So if I run this, see, rock, rock, nobody won. And now it, they are different, so you won now. So we have our or version of equals and an or on version of the string, even though they still exist in the uh, object. We just don't reach those yet. But what if you did want to? What 
What if you want to get the, the two string, I want to display rock, paper, scissors, and then the address. So the player here is also known as the child class, right? Or subclass. That's what the book calls it. Can you see that? Yeah. And the object, let's change color, is known as the parent class or super class. So this, we could have um, child after child, you know. But for now, we're gonna just keep it at two. When we start talking about GUIs, which not next week, the following week, we're gonna start doing GUIs. I'm gonna show you like a whole tree of a uh, genealogical tree, if you will. You're gonna have the window, the forms, the panels, the buttons, and all those good stuff. So here, let's say I want to display my two string, both. I wanna call this two string plus whatever the two string of the parent class was. I'm gonna use this just to delimit. And how do I refer to the parent class? You remember? I mentioned it last time. The child classes or the current classes refer as this, right? This instance. How do I refer to the parent class? It's called super. Anytime you want to refer to the parent class, it doesn't go to super dot super dot super. There's only one level. And then if I press dot, I have everything else that belongs just to the parent class. In this case, it's just the object. So if I run this, uh, let's this do string two instead of get value. Let's run this. So yeah, you got the scissors and then I put my delimiter and then there is the two string that was at the object level. So in essence, what I did is I call this two string plus I went one level up, I call this other two string after. So the keywords here is this, super. You use super to refer to the parent class. Questions? Is this complicated? All right. Um, I'll give you five minutes and then um, we're gonna do a uh, I'm going to show you how to write HTML. 
so you can do your next homework. You know how to write text files now, right, with the print writer. So we're going to use that to make our own HTML web pages. All right, let's take five minutes.